Shalom, shalom, family. Shalom to the nation of Israel, my beloved people. My beloved people. I'm your brother. You're my brothers and sisters. And we all are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. It's a pleasure to be here with you once again. I thank you all for your prayers. I thank you all for your blessings and your thoughts. As we all pray for each other to keep each other safe. And I also thank you for wishing well for myself and my family as well. So I want to say thank you all. Uh, all praise to the Most High. We're here uh, to celebrate the Lord's Sabbath as we are commanded to come together. The Most High gives us that, gives us that commandment in the Bible. And he also wants us to be mindful to keep his his commandments at our forefront, meaning in our minds. Let us always remember to do uh, right by each other by the commandments. Uh, the Bible is pretty simple. You know, oftentimes we uh, think that the Bible is so full of mysteries and all that, but it's very simple. We went into captivity because we broke the commandments of the Lord, okay? Uh, we're continuing on with our class uh, from last week, gathering the gathering the troops in defiance of terrorism. When I said terrorism, I'm talking about the terroristic acts from our enemies, okay? And, and it's, this, is, this is something that we should be mindful of because we are the Israelites and we are in our enemy's land. And it, is all, and it has always been the uh, objective of an enemy to keep us in a servitude posture, to continue to be the fuel uh, the fuel and the labor to keep this system going, okay? That has always been the objective of an enemy, a real enemy. And then we also have enemies among our own people. We pray that, that, we pray that they can get their minds right because they're being used by Satan. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing to be used by your enemies, even if you, rather you are conscious of it or rather you are unconscious of it. If you ever find yourself going against your own people, you need to take stock of your thinking and ask the questions, why do I have such hatred for my own brothers? Why do I have so much hatred for my own sisters? You should think about that. You should have, there, there's something should come into your thinking that says, why am I thinking this way? Because the worst thing that can happen in a situation like that there is going to be a judgment from the Most High. The Most High is going to judge evil. He's going to judge the evil on this earth regardless of who does it. That's why he says there's no respect of persons. Everybody going to get it. <laughs> Just put it like that. Everybody going to get it. And the point, the, the worst part about getting it, why in the world would you be in a, be in a whole life fighting us alongside your enemy and then you're going to die with him? And I say, because your enemy is trying to destroy you. You're saying, I'm going to ignore what the enemy is trying to do to me. I'm going to do the enemy's bidding and destroy his own, dis destroy his own people. Meanwhile, when it's time for the, for the, for the uh, reward to come and the salvation to come, the salvation for the righteous to come, you ain't going to get it. Why? Because you was in, you was in an alliance and league with your enemy. So for you, for you to die with your enemies, I can't think of nothing worse than that. I cannot think of nothing worse. Here, you, here, here you've been cheated out of every damn thing in this, in this world, in this lifetime, by the same enemy. That's the reason why you're catching hell, because this is the one that's doing it to you. And yet, when it comes time for you to get your reward in, just, in, in justice, you didn't earn it, and you're going to die along with the man that was whipping your behind all, all the life. I can't think of, of worse. Uh, that's, that's worse than anything I can imagine. They're like, what was the purpose of you being born? You just, you just should have just stayed in the spirit world. That's crazy. But that's, that's how we are these days. That's how we are these days. So um, this is the class uh, gathering the troops in defiance of terrorism. Okay, terrorism. Terror, terrorism, like I was explaining earlier. Uh, Officer Nashan, let's, let's start reading. I want to read. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Yes. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, yeah, okay. do ye even so to them. For I'm this, sorry, read it again. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. All things that we would have people to do to us. This is a simple, easy law. If we as Israelites practice this, you can, can you imagine how much evil we could get rid of? 
And, and that's very easy. Give me Jeremiah 4.22 real quick. Now, I'm not going to uh, deviate from the, from the topic. I, I do read the comments, and there was one comment, uh, and I did not take offense to it. You know, we do want to get through the lesson, but there are times when things come up, and you do need to, like, sprinkle a little bit of seasoning on people's minds to get them acclimated to righteousness. You got it? Yes, sir. I'll read that. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22. Then we're going back there, and then we're going to get on with our lesson. Read yes. For my people is foolish. For my people, the Israelites, are foolish. Go they, ahead. They have not known me. They are not no. They have not known the Most High because our enemies makes makes it pot, makes it almost a law for you not to know the Most High in their churches. They make it that way. They 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 have a plan to keep us in ignorance, to keep us in evil, keep us in stupidity, just like the Book of Psalms says in Psalms eighty three. Okay, how, how the nations have conspired together that we never, that we never come to the knowledge that we're the Israelites. It said that the name that the uh, that the name of Israel be no more in their remembrance. That's a concerted effort. That means there's a group of people that's conspiring to make sure that you never come back to who you truly are. Read. They are sottish children. Now the Most High said because of that diligence in terms of keeping us as slaves. We have become sottish, stupid. That's what sottish means. Like we have a level of evil that we do to each other that we actually think is the gospel. Boy, that's some serious deception. You're doing evil to your brothers and sisters and you're actually thinking you're in the truth. You're actually thinking that you're a part of God. Boy, that's, that is some delusion that I, I pray that I never get to that level of being reprobate and evil. Read. And they have none understanding. And they have no understanding. You give commandments to such wickedness. I'm talking about our own people now. You give commandments, easy laws like what we was just reading in Matthew. Easy stuff. Read that statement again. And they have none understanding. They have none understanding of small biblical milk scriptures. Go ahead. They are wise to do evil. But, however, when it comes to doing evil, they are wise to do evil. Wise to do evil. You can see how the people deal on social media, Facebook. Wise to do all kinds of evil. And are, are, are people learning anything because of this evil? No. The 12 tribes of Israel are still out here destitute of knowledge. Destitute of finding out who they are. Destitute of coming out of the sin and the evil that they do to each other. You realize that when people come before the camp, like when we're teaching in the camp, Brothers and sisters are, are, are in, a, in a condition where we easily do, do evil to one another. We do evil to one another, and we think it's normal. We don't even, just think about it. I've done wrong to my sister. I've done wrong to my brother yesterday. I did wrong to my brother last week. I did, and we got so used to it, it becomes like a culture. You never think about, you know what, I offended this brother. I offended the sister. We don't even think that way. We have gotten comfortable with offending each other. That's scary. Read that statement. They are wise to do evil. But they are wise to do evil. They are wise. They can find out if they want to do some kind of evil to you, they can find 40 ways within a couple of minutes on how they can mess you up or do something or, or malign your, your spirit and all kinds of things, know how to say things, all that. But... To do good, read the rest of it. But to do good, they have no knowledge. The, the, the leaders are so blind, they don't even recognize that when the people are coming before them, they are, they are hurting in spirit. The people are dried up with thirst because they're not being fed by the people that's supposed to be teaching them righteousness. That's why it says that in uh, Isaiah 5. Give me that real quick. Now, I know I got you on a couple of things. Uh, Isaiah 5. 5 and 13. Read that. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Because our people don't know the Bible. They have, they have no understanding. It says, therefore, have my people gone into captivity. Go ahead. Because they have no knowledge. The knowledge of God is the commandment. That's Malachi 2 verse 7. Go ahead. And their honorable men. Their are honorable men are the people that's supposed to be teaching them. Whether it's church, whether it's preachers, ministers camp leaders, all of that. Read that statement again. And their honorable men are famished. And their honorable men are the men that's supposed to be the ones that know the Bible. They're supposed to be the ones that's teaching the commandments. And the what? 
and their and honorable their, men. And their honorable men are famished. They're empty of God's understanding. They're empty of God's law. So they can't really feed the people. So they're, they'll stay in a, de- in, a, in a spiritual destitute state and not even realize it. Not even realize that I did wrong to my brother last week. Brother corrected me. I still act like I wasn't corrected. And you think you're normal. Somebody brought you the law and said, brother, it's not right to lie on brothers. It's not right to slander brothers. And read the law of the Bible. And they, and they so damn reprobate, they can't even see that. And act like you ain't read nothing to them. That's, some, that's a serious problem there. Read that statement again. And their honorable men are famished. So their leaders are supposed to be checking them on this. If you're going to be in front of the people teaching them, you're supposed to be correcting them to get rid of that sickness that's in their head. Go ahead. And their and honorable famished means empty, starving, meaning don't have, they have no knowledge, meaning the Bible ain't in them, to make it simple. Go ahead. And their multitude dried up with thirst. And the people that's coming before them are dried up with thirst. That's the reason why the Bible says, as the governor, so are his officers. Because the people that's following this idiot, the, the people are going to be just as idiotic as him. This is some scary stuff, and this is nothing to play with. Read that statement again. And their multitude dried up with thirst. So the, what, what did it say? The multitude dried up with what? Thirst. Thirst, because they are thirsty. That's the reason why they're coming in. People join camps, people go to church, people go into these spiritual houses and all that because they are looking for answers to their problems. They're not just going in there. People have, people have a reason for going into any place. Why would I go to a hospital if I'm not sick? Why would I go to a church if I'm not spiritually sick? I'm looking for answers to fix me of my problems. Why would I come into a congregation if I'm not going to be taught the medicine that's going to cure my problems? Read. Read that statement again. And their multitude dried up with thirst. So the multitude are thirsty, but they're not being fed because the man that's over them is not teaching them anything. So that they come in empty and they leave empty. Some of them become worse. Some of them learn how to be wise and evil. But when it comes to do good, they can't even fathom how to do that. That was it on that, right? Now read, yeah, yeah. is that it? Yes, read, sir, that's it. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself. Because the people are not getting the laws, the people are not getting the knowledge of what they're seeking, their condition has gotten worse. The condition is called hell. That's where we're at. Our people are in hell. When our people come before us in the camps, they're in hell. They're saying, please help me. And if you're not feeding them, they're going to stay in hell. Read, read that, read that verse again. The there, whole, therefore, hell have enlarged herself. Be, because you're not being fed, because your leaders are destitute of teaching you what you, what you initially came for, you're trying to get yourself together because you don't really know what you need when you come into the hospital. The doctors have to prescribe what you really need if you're going to get my drift. We'll see people coming in and have certain kinds of ailments, certain kinds of issues. We got to go into to the Bible and find the medicine. The Bible is the medicine cabinet. We got to go inside the Bible and find out what's their sickness. What are they struggling with? What do they need help with? That takes skill. You can't be famished and be in front of people that it's in need. Read that again. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself. Because they're not being fed properly, their condition has gotten worse, meaning because the leader did not help me. I'm twofold the child of hell before I came. But worse, I'm worse off now than I was when I even came in. That's some scary stuff. Now I know how to be even more wise and evil, but to do good, I have no knowledge because I wasn't taught. Some of these brothers and sisters come inside camps and they learn how to be even more evil when they come in than they were when they were in the world. Look at Facebook. Look at what's going on on social media. Look at the evil that you see. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You'd be like, where these, where these people came from? They used to be regular people in school, classmates and all of that. But when they all, quote, unquote, came into the truth, they became worse than anything and don't even realize how wrong they are according to the scriptures. That's that judgment that's going to come on them. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. When I talk about gathering the troops, we got to gather, get those people together too. The ones that will listen. That's the point. So anytime that we are admonishing anyone, our objective and our aim is to correct you according to the scriptures so that you can be saved. There's no hate here. Our objective is to save you. Ain't nobody trying to win no 
uh, view tickets or whatever the mess they be talking about. The hell with that. We're trying to get out of captivity. That's what we're trying to do. Right. Is that the end of that verse? No, sir. Read. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And your condition, our condition has gotten worse. That's why it says open her mouth. Hell has opened her mouth without measure. Measure, meaning it's unmeasurable how bad our situation is. And it had actually gotten worse because you came in looking for answers. You came in looking for the cure and you didn't get it. And that sore that's in your spirit has ulcered and gotten worse and gotten worse and worse. You know who's going to be responsible for, that? responsible for that? The man that's supposed to be over them. That's what the watchman's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to see the, he's supposed to see the sickness of the people and cure them. You're supposed to do that. You're supposed to fix that. You're not supposed to leave the people that way. The most I said, I put you in charge of them. You better fix them. Where are we at? And now, their, go ahead. In their glory, in their multitude, in their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. Everything about them is going to descend into a worse state. So they're worse off when after they have not been fed because they're looking to be fed and they have not been fed. So it actually gets worse. So this, this, this business of dealing with God's people is nothing to play with. Okay? Give me where, now, where was I at before this? Jeremiah 4.22 and Matthew 7. Uh, okay, I'm done with Jeremiah. Go to uh, Matthew. Let's get on with the lesson. Matthew, read Ma that. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. Here's that simple law I was talking about. All, what did it say again? Let's take it slow. Read the, it again. Therefore, all things whatsoever. All things whatsoever. Just uh, each of us. Think about, think about us as individuals. All of you. Think about what we're reading. Read it again. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. What would you have men to do to you? Would you want men to, to steal from you? Would you want, would, would you want women to, to, to steal from you? Would you want men to mistreat you, women? Would you women want men to, what, what I'm saying, you, you women don't want men to mistreat you. You men don't want women mistreating you or cheating on you. Or, you would not want that. You would not steal, you won't lie. You, would, you, would you want anybody lying to you? Lying is a, lying in the Bible is punishable, punishable by death. You know how dangerous, you know what lies can do? You get people killed. And we do it with like we did like there's no judgment. The most I said there's a judgment for that. And that's what I'm talking about. So it's the same way I would not want anyone lying to me or doing any evil to me or stealing from me or anything. The same thing that I, if the way I would have them treat me, I would perceive in my intelligence that's the way I should deal with them. That's an easy law. That's easy. That's easy. God puts it in our spirit to have some basic understanding of what, what right and wrong is, even if you haven't read the Bible. Because that's in us. Even if you haven't read, the Bible is just a confirmation, but a lot of the things you already know in your spirit. You wouldn't want somebody doing evil to you that you, that you consider evil. You'd be like, well, why in the world am I going to do it to them if I don't want it done to me? That's what the verse is saying. This is easy. If we just practice that alone, a whole lot of problems that we have in the nation could be cured. Just that alone. Read that, read that whole law. Read the whole thing. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. That's easy. That's an easy law. You would not want anyone to mistreat you, do you wrong, steal from you, rob from you. So why would you do that to others? If we all understood that, that means even 90%, or damn near 100% of the mess that we go through will be gone. And it will, transform your, it will transform your house, transform your city, transform the state, country, everything. It will transform the whole nation if we just practice that simple thing. Easy. Now, go, now so we got all that, right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, let's get on with what I'm talking about. Give me the book of... of uh, it was a, uh, I was going to start with, uh, give me the book of Titus. Titus, I'm calling this the watchman because the watchmen are the ones that are charged with gathering the troops. Okay. A watchman is a leader. A leader is the one that has to assess the people's abilities, 
assess their knowledge, assess their strengths, their weaknesses, and organize them to be, a, to be in a more perfect union, if you will. And when I say put them in a more perfect union, you, when you, the different facets of the nation of Israel, you have different talents. I talked about this in some classes, uh, I think on Tabernacles, I talked about a section of this, where we have to know how to organize the talents. That's what, that's what troops are. These particular talents that we're gathering in as basically troops that work without, inside the engine of the nation. All of these different facets of the nation works, have their own entity and their, and their own autonomy, but they all work as a system to help the whole nation move forward, if y'all can understand what I'm saying. Like an electrical system in a car is only electrical, but, it all, but when you put it with the, with, the, with the fuel system, you put it with the mechanical system, you put it with the uh, HVAC system, all of these systems work together to help you have a, uh, a, a, an efficient car that can move from A to B and comfort and all that other stuff. Y'all feel what I'm saying? That's how we have to be. The troops are these, uh, are these special uh, groups that have to know how, that have to be organized by a leader. Or the ECU in your car, so to speak, the uh, electronic control unit, if those of you that, that deal with mechanics, that, that, that deals with the timings of the operations of all of the different parts in your car. Okay? So a leader has to know how to organize all of that. That's what I'm talking about. Read. You want Titus 1 and 5? Tur why, uh, start with the first verse. Titus chapter 1 and verse 1. We're going to read down to like 7. Come yes, on. Sir. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. A, 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 Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, go ahead, according to the faith. In God's elect. Read. In the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. And which is after godliness. Godliness. This is the righteousness, this is easy righteousness that I was talking about, which is an easy thing to remember. Come on. And hope of eternal life. And hope of eternal life. That's what we all want. We all want eternal life. That's what we say. Go ahead. Which God that cannot lie. God cannot. Do you see that? God cannot lie. The most I hate lies, man. Go ahead. Promise before the world began. He promised this eternal life before the world began. Read. But have in due times manifested his word through preaching. Which through is what? Through preaching. Through preaching. The Most High is given, tell, letting us know the power of when, these, when the words of the Bible come through your mouth and land on the ears and the minds of, of his people, things happen. When you're able to speak effectively about the laws of God, you can, you can, you can organize the people effectively. You can make things happen when you know how to use this. This, this Bible is powerful in the right hands. You can make some real stuff happen if you know what you're doing with it. Read. Which is committed unto me. Which is committed unto Paul. Go ahead. According to the commandment of God, our Savior. To, our, our Savior. Go ahead. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith. After the common faith, because uh, Titus wasn't literally Paul's son, but he's saying that in a, in a reverence type of thing, because he came up. He, Paul taught him. Okay? So that's what we're talking about here. Read that statement again. To Titus, my own my own son. Go ahead. Meaning, after, uh, meaning a devout follower. So to make it simple. Go ahead. After the common faith. After the what? Common faith. Meaning he listened to Paul. Go ahead. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay, so, so Titus is ready to take on what he learned. That's what, that's what our job is. As leaders, we teach you young men. We teach you women. How to, how to know how to stand up in your office, to run your office so that other people can learn from your example and continue to expand. That's the reason why we have the different programs that we have here. This is not make-believe. We're serious about this. And all of this, just so you can understand, all of this effort comes from the old elders. I, ain't t like I, was, I don't know how many of y'all saw me last night. I was a bit in the red, on the red zone a little bit. Y'all all right? <laughs> yes, sir. But, but I was making a point about how, how the real spirit of what we used to do in the past, that's where we came from. Me and Bishop, we came from that. We came from the real elders. And that was our spirit. Our spirit was about mobilizing the nation of Israel. This is not new. The cleanup program, like, well, like I was saying last night, I'll just make this point because I was going to play the video again. The cleanup program that we do now, we were doing that then. That's what, when I was making a point about the woman in the park and all that, we were doing that back then. 
because we believed in that. We believed in the, in the, in the community. Y'all heard me tell my story about living on 126 and had all the drugs and all that mess, and we had to clean all that up because we believed in that. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, read. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order. The that, that, so the, the leaders are to set men in order. So when we talk to the men, we say men got to be built up. Women got to be built up to know how to conduct themselves in the business of the Most High. To make sure that the, the, the things, that the, the uh, assignments and the responsibilities of the Most High's business gets handled. That's the gospel. Because when the business gets handled, we're getting closer and closer to the kingdom. Ain't no such thing as I believe in the Lord and just letting all the business of the Most High go to the side. That's not what the Most High is talking about. The Most High, this is the vineyard of work, putting bricks in. And that's what the leader is supposed to be able to do. Supposed to be able to teach you how to cause you to aspire to be great, to be great leaders. To know how to inspire people. To know how to reach into the souls of your brothers and sisters and see where their pain is. And say, this is the cure for you, my sister. This is the cure for you, my brother. This in the Bible. And you bring them out of that mess and therefore their hell begins to escape them. Now, they've, now they're becoming lively stones. That's what our job is as leaders. This is what Paul is telling Timothy. Read that, uh, Titus, I'm sorry. Read that verse again. Where you at? Verse 5. Read. For this cause. Left For this I, reason. Go ahead. Left I thee in Crete. Left I, Paul, I left you in Crete. Go ahead. That thou shouldest set in order. That thou shalt do what? Set in order. That you shall set in order. To set something in order, you have to know the qualities of the different parts of what you're setting. You just can't call. To set something in order, you have to know the value. You have to know the components of what you're setting in order. How would you put four before three? How would you put, why would you put four before three when you, when you know that three comes before four? You have to know the value of these different things. The same the way we deal with the departments. We know the value of the departments and we assemble that. Because we, that's what it means to set something in order. You have to know their strengths. You have to know their principles. You have to know what they are about. Then that way I can say, okay, you'll be best suited here. You'll be best suited there. You be, it's a lot of work, but that's what a leader does. You got a lot of people running around talking about their leaders. Leaders are the damn flies. Leaders are supposed to know how to really deal with people. Right. Read that statement again. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. You suppose that a leader is supposed to be able to look at what's lacking. That's what it means there, the things that are wanting. Wanting means to lack. It says he has to, the leader has to be able to look around and see what are the needs that are not being met, that are not being met, and who's qualified to deal with those things. That's the same thing that happens with brothers and sisters coming here. You have to look at their spirit and say, what, what is wanting in their spirit? What scriptures do I need to apply to fix those problems? Because there, there's wanting components in their spirit. A watchman has to know those things. He has to know how to deal with the people. This is serious business. Read that again. That thou shouldest set in order. So you, in order to set things in order, you got to be wise. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to be able to assess talents and everything. You got to be able to look in your sanctuary, for an example. You got to be able to look. Like we look around here and I say, okay, we need this. I'm going to make it simple. Like for the kitchen, if we need something such for the kitchen, I have to know that something is missing. I have to know that something's missing from the bathroom or this or that and the other. I have to know. You have to take an inventory. You have to look and see what the qualities and what's missing and say, okay, well, this is missing. That's missing. We need to replenish this. That's setting things in order because you want to make sure that the operation of all of the, of the factions of your nation is operating to its optimum performance. That's the nation of Israel. A leader is over that. He's supposed to be able to see and direct that kind of authority to fix those things. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All praise to the Most High. Keep reading. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city. And ordain elders. So not only that, when it says that set things, read it again. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get my thing up here. That thou shouldest set in order. The things that are wanting. The things that are lacking. You have to set those things in order. So how would he do this? Go ahead. 
and ordain elders. He would have to ordain leaders like department heads. I'm just I'm speaking on that level so you can understand what I mean in the physical sense. You'll have to say, okay, well, this we need certain kinds of leaders to handle this. We need certain kinds of people to handle that. That's what elders are, people that, that, that you charge them with handling that level of business. A, 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 a leader has to be able to assess who's qualified to sit in that seat to handle this. Who's qualified to sit in that seat to handle that? That's how that works, okay? In all aspects, spiritual and all that, read. And ordain elders in every city. So you have to, so the job was to go, when we go to these different cities, when we go to these different, uh, uh, the different camps in IUI, so I just use that as an example. We'll go in and we'll have our order and we'll check things out. We'll say, okay, well, they need work in this, they need such and such and that. And we'll say, who's qualified to deal with this business? And the scriptures tell you about that. I have good report and all that. It's a whole list of things that you have to go by in order to select who's to fit the bill to take care of that. Y'all follow me? Yes, sir. But that's what a leader does. That's what a watchman does because he wants results. He wants righteous results because he's in charge of all of that. Serious business. Read on. What verse you in? The end of verse 5. Read. As I had appointed thee. As I, Paul, had appointed Titus. And the way the Most High appoints everybody, he appointed us. Keep that word in there. Appointed. We can either be appointed to righteousness or we could be appointed to death when we disobey this. I'm going to read that. Read on. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children. These are part of the conditions that that's good. This is what you want. This is, these are the, this is what you want in these positions. Go ahead. Not accused of riot or unruly. For Go, a ahead. Bis- Go ahead. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. Not self-will. As a steward of God. Go ahead. Not self-will. Not self-will, meaning that he moves according to counsel. Not emotional. Emotional damage. Emotional damage. Go ahead. <laughs> Not soon angry. Not soon angry. Not given Not to. Not soon angry. You touch my chair, nigga. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I heard a breakdown, man. I'm going to do it. I I saw a comment on it, and somebody from that group, you give me Deuteronomy 27, 17. I'm sorry. I got to do it, man, because the brother moved the chair. I'm not going to deviate. I'm getting it. But I just, I couldn't resist. I can't resist. I can't resist. The chair. Read the scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 17. How in the world do you equate this scripture to the chair? Listen. <laughs> Cursed be he that removeth, removeth his neighbor's landmark. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's not even funny. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark and... and and all the people shall say amen. And all the dummies shall say, I'm in agreement with it. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> but that shows you when it's wise to do evil, you went and found a scripture to justify complete stupidity. Damn. I got to get off that, man. My whole lesson going to be destroyed messing with these people. <laughs> Go back to where I was at, man. Titus, Damn. chapter like, 1. Like I said, certain levels of stupidity... Only the angels in, in, in outer space could, could, uh, could give a definition to the parameters of stupidity that that falls. I can't, I can't handle that level of stupidity. It's, it's not on earth. That's, that's, that's something else. That's, that's, that's the new math. Read. Titus chapter 1 and verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. Not soon angry. Not soon angry. <laughs> Not given to wine. Not given to wine. Can't be no damn drunk. You got to have your mind together. Here's another one. How in the world you going to be in, in the seat of leadership teaching the people and you drunk? How in the hell does that even make sense? What scripture is that? Read. No striker. Not given. No striker. Lord have mercy. Fighting. This is crazy. And you will just go through all of this here and say there's nothing wrong. Go ahead. 
Not given to filthy lucre. Not given to filthy lucre. It's all about money. Views. The hell with the people. People there listening, and you said the hell with that. Let's just set up aside these brothers and curse them out. The hell with what happens to them. You ain't, what are you teaching them? Nothing. This is, uh, this is beyond dimensions. This is beyond the dimensions. Go ahead, read. But a lover of hospitality. You have to be a lover of hospitality, dealing proper with the people. Like I said, love thy neighbor as thyself is simple. What you would want your neighbor to do to you, you, why don't you just do that to them? Easy. Go ahead. A lover of good men. A lover, a lover of righteous men. Go ahead. Sober. Sober, meaning clear thinking. Go ahead. Just. Just. Justice. Go Hol ahead. Holy. Holy. What verse you in? The end of eight. Temperate. Read on. Keep on. Temperate. Holding fast the faithful word. Our job as a leader is to hold fast, the hold tight. That's what fast means. Hold tight the faithful word. Go ahead. As he have been taught. This is the reason why leadership is important because what you're taught is what you're supposed to hold on to. You better pray that people are teaching you properly. If they teach you to hate people, you, Lord have mercy, they teach you to hate people that you don't even know. And you're holding tight to that. You can't even do nothing. You're you talking about, I hate so-and-so, and, -so, and you've never seen the brother, never met him. That is, that's, that's, that's level five retarded. <laughs> How in the world could you be so angry with people that you never met, that never said a word, don't even know what you look like? You didn't even recognize that your head is upside down. I hate Bishop Nathaniel. Nigga, you never met him. Why do you hate him? Because my general told me to. You a fool. Read. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. As that he has been taught. So what you're being taught better be right. If the person that's over you teaching you, you better make sure that they're teaching you properly. And the most I give you the scriptures to, to check to see if he's teaching you properly. When you hear something come out of that Bible that does not go along with the Lord, then you know this dude is off his mind. Y'all hear me? I'm telling you. I'm from the old school. Y'all heard me talk about it a little bit yesterday. We sitting in the council. I'm just going to say this just a little bit. 1995, it was damned, I think it was near the fall area when this happened, like I forget the exact month. But we're sitting there and we're listening and they're talking, they talking and they're saying something. I'm like, wait a minute, this don't sound like scriptures at all. How they're just coming against the leader of the school like this. Here. Where is that in the Bible? So as much as we loved the men, once we heard that that stuff was going the wrong way and saw what they did to the top, to the top man who the Lord was working with, that's it. My reverence for you is over. That's how you got to be. Y'all hear me? We ain't, we ain't want no yes men up in here. We're going to deal with these scriptures. If the scriptures are not being taught, goodbye. That's how we're going to get, that's how we're going to get the hell out of here. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Come on, read. That he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. When your knowledge, when your, when your doctrine is sound, when you're teaching the Bible properly, the people going to come. You ain't got to worry about it. The most I said, I got my elect, and they're going to find my teachers. The scriptures say that. Give me that where it says uh, they, they, they should see their teachers. Give me that scripture. The Lord give you the bread of adversity. This is what this is talking about. So while you're looking at it, I'm going to read this part again. It says, we are to hold fast, hold tight the faithful word that has been given to us by our leadership that, that we may be able to, with sound doctrine, be able to exhort our brothers and sisters and to convince the gainsayers. The gainsayers are those, the, the, are the ones that, that's, that's against this truth in the beginning. Or got, uh, or got some evil to say about it. When they come in and they're trying to challenge and all kind of stuff, this truth is so powerful, it can, can, it can change them. So you can understand, Paul was a gainsayer when he was Saul. The most I had to deal with him. A lot of brothers and sisters come in here and they be just like this here. But when that word is coming out right, it can change them. I used to be against them Israelites, but now I see what they're talking about. That's how that goes. You got me? Yes, Where sir. we at? Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. So the point that I'm talking about is when the people are coming into this truth, as they're going to they're come into this gospel, 
And the most I say, all the thing you have to do is teach my people, teach the sound doctrine. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. If they, whatever they're doing, let them do. Just as long as they're not doing a level of evil, because I'm not talking about other camps that just teach slightly different. The most I got them doing what they're doing. But when you get to the point where you're belligerent and trying to bring violence and evil on your brothers, the most I, get, the most I'm gonna deal with you. I'm gonna just leave it that way for somebody to say I'm trying to put something out there. Y'all all right? Read. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. So because captivity, this is what captivity has done to us. We're catching hell. That's that hell that we were talking about earlier in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Read. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. That's the reason why we go out on the street. That's the reason why we're out here. That's the reason why we're teaching. That's the reason why we're making it our business to be everywhere. Okay. Read. But. Thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Meaning, do you, meaning the most high going to bring the prophets to the people that's supposed to get this word. I'm just making it simple. It's not the scripture in Amos. Give me Amos 9 and 9. They're going to get found. So you ain't got to worry about that. If you're teaching the sound doctrine, the people going to come in. You ain't got to worry about numbers. You ain't got to worry about all that foolishness. Just teach the Bible. The most high said, I got the numbers that's going to get this truth and we out of here. Amos 9, 9. Amos I'm, chapter I'm 9. talking about the watchman. This is, this is the class, by the way. Go ahead. Amos chapter 9 and verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. These are the elect. That's what it's talking about. The Israelites, that's, that's going to make it. I will sift the nation of Israel from among all the nations, regardless of where we are. That's what Revelation, the seventh chapter is talking about. The seventh chapter and the ninth verse. Coming out of all nations, out of all tongues and all that. It's talking about the Israelites that were scattered in these areas. Read. Like as corn is sifted in a seed. That's how he's going to sift us out of he gonna he, He's going to make sure that he get his elect, regardless of where we are. Go ahead. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Why is it that the least grain not get this gospel? When the Most High said that, this, that the sound doctrine will make them come. So the only thing you have to do is teach the way we were taught. That's what, that's what Paul, that's what Christ is saying. Give them the gospel as I have delivered it to you. And when you do that, the people are going to respond because they're not responding to you per se. They're responding to my words being spoken through you. That's leadership. That's leadership. But we are wise to do evil. But when it comes to do what I just said, they have no knowledge. Why? Because the laws of God is not in them. That's scary. That's, that's really a scary situation. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Uh, he's finished in the ninth verse, right? Yes, sir. Go to Ezekiel, the third chapter. Ezekiel 3. Because I'm talking about the watchman now. We, this is gathering the troops. Still talking about gathering the troops. Our job is to gather the nation of Israel. Like Psalms 50 and 5 say, gather my saints unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So we're gathering. Read it. You want to start at verse 1, Bishop? No, start at 17. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I have made you a leader, a watchman, a father, a guide, a confidant. That's what it's talking about. I have made you a leader. Read it again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Uh, unto the house of Israel. Read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Hear the word at my mouth. The Lord, these watchmen us is to give the people God's words. Go ahead. And give them warning from me. And give them warning from him. So what is the warning that we are to give the people? Read. When I say unto the wicked. When I say unto the people that are in wickedness. Thou shalt surely die. That's from the most high. If you don't repent of your sins, you are going to die. That's why we tell people, you hear Deacon Ace have said all the time, you got to die! <laughs> oh, they don't like that. <laughs> I need that sound bite, man. <laughs> Call my brother up. huh? You're going to die! <laughs> yes, sir. He's right. Read it again. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. There ain't no maybes in that. For the wages of sin is death. If you allow the people to stay in sin, death will get them. Read. And thou givest him not warning. And you as a leader, you don't warn the people. You see the problems of the people. You see them committing evil and sin and wickedness, and you don't say nothing. Go ahead. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. You don't warn him about what God said he going to do. 
Go ahead. To save his life. What is the purpose of us dealing with these dudes? To save his life. Even like we was talking about yesterday, the brothers were was teaching last week. Saying, listen, you're breaking the laws of the most high. And he said, listen, I'm going to be real with you right now. This is love for you, brother. I'm trying to save your life. This is what, what we were saying last week in KC. We were telling when they were came act like straight niggas towards us. He was like, listen, let's, let's put the nigga stuff to the side. Let me deal with you the way like we would deal with our brothers. I said, listen, the laws of the most high say this, and I'm dealing with this out of love. That's what was said. Them niggas ignored all that because they, they got hatred that was taught from their leader to, be, to hate purple. I, I guess they don't even drink grape soda. <laughs> Damn. I don't even know why I don't like grape soda. I, I just can't stand it. That's, that's, that's not a laughing matter either. It sounds like we, we, you know, it sound like some kind of comic release, relief. But that's, you got to really think about it. What in the world could be inside a man's, what can make you hate people that you've done, never done anything to you? Meanwhile, you got the white man that got all kind of Christianity and all that that's destroying your people wholesale, drug dealers and everything. You ain't got a damn thing to say against them, nothing. Talk about this is my block. What kind of foolishness is that? With the white man's name on the damn street sign. Get up there and change that sign and see what happened. Take a screwdriver and begin to take one screw and see what happened. The white man said, what the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm, this is our block. <laughs> Come on, man. This is crazy. Read. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. I know it sounds like I digress into the madness. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to leave that alone. I ain't going to go into it no more. I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I said enough. I let the Lord deal with it. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. But let's read that statement again. What, what verse you in? The Where you at? end of 18. Uh, read 18 again. Yes, sir. When I say unto the wicked, Go ahead. thou shalt surely die. If, you, if our people are in sin and you leave them there, they will die. Go ahead. And thou givest him not warning. And we, like I said, if we leave them in sin and we don't give them warning, remember the wages of sin is death regardless. Go ahead. Nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way. Nor speaketh to warn the wicked of his wicked ways. To save his life. What is the purpose? To save his life. To save his or her life. That's what love is. Suffer not sin upon your brother. That's a basic law. Be not, be not, what does it say in uh, Leviticus? It say, um, uh, thou shalt not bear any grudge against the children of thy people. And thou shalt not, get it, can I, no, no, Sean, you stay with, you, you got it? You got it real quick? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Because this is, this is what love is to save his life. This is what it's talking about. Leviticus. And y'all realize that I'm, this, this is basic information that I'm giving. There's nothing hard here. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. When you don't tell your brother that they're breaking the laws, when you don't tell your sisters that they're breaking the law, you are demonstrating hatred towards them. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Thou shalt in all cases, that's what any wise means. In all cases, you are to correct your brothers. You are to correct your sisters. Go ahead. And not suffer sin upon him. And not allow sin upon them. Not allow them to remain in sin. That's how you save their life. Why in the world am I going to look at a brother or sister that's trying to correct me in this, in, in this fashion and get mad at her? I hate him. I hate so-and-so. Why? Because we're telling you the truth. Paul said that. That's in the scriptures. What is it? Galatians 4, 16. You ain't got to read it. Therefore, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes, sir. That's what he means. I'm telling you the truth to save your life and you hate me. That's crazy. That's crazy. Read. Thou shall not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against the children of your own people. Go ahead. But thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. There's that law again. Thou shall love thy neighbor as you would love yourself. The way you would love yourself, the things that you would do for yourself, you would also want to do that to your neighbor. That's easy. Why in the world are we so damn wicked when it's such, well, this is easy to do? We really got a serious problem. We got to fight against all that evil. And the Lord is going to be with us. He's going to be with you. Just stick by his commandments. And he said, I got you. It's already written. We're going to get the kingdom. All we got to do is continue, like, like the scripture say, hold fast to what I have given you. 
Okay, where we at? Uh, go, yeah, go, go back to Ezekiel. Come Ezekiel on. chapter 3 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. To save his life. Go ahead. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Why? Because the wage of the sin is death. Read. But his blood will I require at thy hand. But his blood, the man that died, is going to be required at your hands because you did not correct him. You let him stay in his sin. A leader that's teaching his followers, quote unquote, to hate people, he's going to pay for that. Because he's going to die for that hatred. You're going to die for, for imagining evil and hatred upon your brother. And you put that in his head. And he's going to die because of that. But the Most High said because he did it on your bidding because you never corrected him from the evil. And you know by law. That's what the Lord said. I'm going to hold you responsible for it. Y'all see how dangerous this is? Yes, Go ahead. Yet, if thou warn the wicked. But if you warn the wicked. Which is what we were doing. Go ahead. And he turned not from his wickedness. And you said to hell with it. Nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity. You're still going to die because the wage of the sin is death. But we warned him though. Read. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Our hands are clean. The blood is off our hands. That's the point. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. What verse are you in? Verse 20 now. Go ahead. Again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness. All this is dealing with the people who are supposed to be qualified to deal with gathering the troops. That's why I'm reading this. Read. And commit iniquity. And if a man, it says when a man doth turn away from his, I'm putting away there. It says from his righteousness, meaning you were righteous. You did all kinds of righteous acts. That's like people falling out of this truth, did all kind of great stuff. And then they said to hell with the gospel and go back into the world and, and do all kind of evil and wicked. You're like, Damn. Wasn't this dude doing this? Wasn't this dude doing that? Wasn't this sister doing this? Great works in the body. And you remember them for them great things that they did. Man or woman. Read. And, a c c and commit iniquity. Now they on the pole. Now they, now they selling dope or whatever. Whoremongering or whatever the case may be. Now they just breaking the laws of the most high as if they never had them. Read. And I lay a stumbling block before him. That part is scary. That goes with the scripture that says... That uh, once you turn back to your old ways, the latter end is worse than when you first came in because your head changes. Now, the wickedness is justified as righteous. That's when you're reprobate. That's when you can't see. That's what, you, that's what you're witnessing in these days with some of these leaders. They think they're, they think they're correct. And you know, by y'all know what the law says, you know that they're off, big time off slandering and lies how in the world are you gonna say god is with you the bible says prove all things you got no proof but yet you're gonna put all that out there why because it feels good to satan i mean you <laughs> read that statement again and I lay a stumbling block before him a stumbling block meaning that you had the right mind when you started out and you know that if I go over here and smoke this dope or smoke this crack, in your right mind, you know it's wrong. Y'all follow me? But once I get to smoking that crack, make sure they don't edit that now. They'll be like, oh, he say he smoked crack. Huh? <laughs> I better not say I. Maybe I better say he, right? <laughs> and he smoked that crack. <laughs> Before he smoked the crack, he said, I know I'm doing wrong. Because in my right mind, I know to stay away from it. Here's the stumbling block now. Now you done smoked it. And you felt the effects of sin. And now that becomes proper. You can no longer turn back to what used to be proper. Because now it's seen as improper. Now that has become your new standard by which you measure right and wrong. That's known as reprobate. You hear me? Y'all yes, understand what I'm saying? I'm just going to sin a little bit. This is, this is a conversation that the brother had with me a few years ago. He said he wanted to go and deal in the world with these girls and wanted to deal and do all kind of craziness. And I said, brother, if you do that, you might get into that thing. He said, all I want to do is try it and I'm going to come back. I said, well, you're talking this way now because you haven't done it yet. But once you step into that arena and your whole, and your whole reference change, 
you begin to justify that, and then the conversation that me and you have becomes wrong. How in the world are you going to go from what you think is right to wrong when that's what you think? Once your thinking changes, it's over. Once your zero reference, that's the way I usually describe it. Once your zero reference, the zero on, the, on your scale, zero, one, two, three, four, five, negative, one, two, three, four, five, positive. The middle of that is zero. So that means everything on one side is wrong, everything on the other side is right. But if you move that zero reference to negative three, <laughs> you dig it? Negative three, you're sitting at negative three, and that means negative two, negative one is still negative, but you call that positive. And that's your thinking. That becomes your thinking. That's the stumbling block of what happens to us in the spirit when we go off. Y'all understand that? How in the world are you going to argue? How in the world are you going to have a, uh, argue, uh, a, a discussion with somebody who thinks that that negative three is actually zero? You you talking apples? He's talking oranges. You there's no communication there. That's confusion. But if you justify that, you finish. That's the stumbling block of what happens to people in the scriptures. Now they begin to justify the sin that they once knew was sin. And you can't tell them nothing. That's when the most I put that stumbling block on them. Go back and read that again. Again, when a righteous man does turn from his uh, righteousness mm -hmm. and commit iniquity. And he commits sin. Go ahead. And I lay a stumbling block before him. And I lay a stumbling block before him where he, know, where he loses his ability to determine right and wrong. That's what it's talking about. He, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he have done, shall not be remembered. His righteousness that he done, so all the great works that you did before that, nobody knows about it. The Most High is going to wipe all of that out. Who in the world would want to go through all of this captivity and get to the end, like I was saying earlier, and then lose it at the last minute? That's some scary stuff. You hear me? Nobody should want that, man or woman. Read. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Because we didn't warn him. Go ahead. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Because we warned him. This is what we hope. This is why we do what we do. We try to warn brothers, not for our own sake. Of us warning you gets the blood off our hands, but it's to save your life. Read. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Also, thou hast delivered our soul because we did our job. And when we did our job, you did listen. So, therefore, you can repent and get yourself right. That's the objective. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. All of that is involved in a leader. That's what a leader is supposed to be doing. When a leader does that, that makes him qualified to know how to organize the people, to gather the troops. But you have to have all of that in your mind. You have to have all of that in your spirit to know how to properly deal with people. Y'all feel me? All right, all praises. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 7. 1 Peter 2 and 7. Here's another faction of that. 7 and 8. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 7. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. Meaning we believe that Christ is precious and this gospel is precious. Go ahead. But unto them which be disobedient. But to them that take the same gospel and turn it into lasciviousness and evil and wicked and riotous. What does it say? Read. Un unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. But unto them which is disobedient. Go ahead. The stone which the builders disallowed. They disallowed Christ. They disallowed the program of the Most High. They disallowed the Bible. I'm bringing it up today. They, dis they disavow, they disallowed this gospel. They don't want to hear nothing about the salvation. They don't want to hear nothing about the commandments. Keep the commandments. They don't want to hear none of that. Go ahead. The same is made the head of the corner. The, the, you're not, in other words, you're not going to stop this train. That's the point. You're not going to stop this gospel. You're going to get stopped. Go ahead. A and a stone of stumbling. That's that, that's that stumbling block that I was talking about earlier. And also this truth becomes a stumbling block to them. That's and the most, uh, putting that strong delusion on them to cause them to believe a lie. That they all might be damned. Go ahead. And a rock of offense. And this Bible becomes a rock of offense. Not, 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 not a pillow of offense, a rock of offense. Because this rock going to grind them to powder. Read. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even them which stumble at the Bible. 
Go ahead. This Being, is the, this, so you can understand, this is the scoffers you read about in the same book, Peter's. Go ahead. Being disobedient. Being what? Disobedient. Being disobedient to God's commandments. Read. Where unto also they were appointed. You see that? To where also they were what? Appointed. The most high got the number of some of our people just ain't no damn good. Some of our people are appointed to die. You feel me? Yes, sir. So when you once you when you get these kinds of spirits, that ain't gainsayers. That's those those people are meant to get destroyed by Christ. Okay, that's why we ain't tolerate no foolishness. We warn you, we give you some, we give you some warnings and this and that and the other, try to get you right. If your mind is still gonna go to the left and all that, you, after a while, hey, hey, go. We got two, three times, go goodbye. Boom. We can't play with you. Because you might be you might fall into that category. They were appointed to die. That's the two thirds that we talk about often. That's scary. Sixty six out of every one hundred of our people is appointed to die. That's a large number. Huh? A dollar. Only thing you got is thirty three cents to spend. Sixty six cents of the dollar, you you it's, it's no use to you. That's how the most high is dealing. I think that we need to fight to make sure that we're in that 33%. Y'all all right? That's how we got to do it. Okay? So let's keep these commandments that the most I said. Hey, uh, now we can ready to get further into the lesson. Last week, we were to put my book up to choice because I was making a point about being a leader. Being a leader has to be l like the watchman. As a watchman, you have to be able to foresee problems coming towards the nation because you're over the nation. You're over the people. Your job is to look out for the, for the people. The watchman, in literal terms, the watchman was the person that stood on the tower. I'm telling you, I'm giving you this because I'm um, correlating this with what Bishop Nathaniel has been teaching for the longest. Okay? When I say been teaching it, I'm talking about like the things like the pantry, the pantry things, the things like we talk about with the land and all that. There's different things that Bishop is bringing out f to prepare us for what's coming. That's what a watchman does. Y'all all right? We see how the enemy is moving. We read the scriptures. The scriptures say, watch as well as pray. We're watching and we're praying for mercy in these tribulations, in these uh, tumultuous, tribulatory times that's coming up. We want to make sure that we, that we prepare the body, we make sure that we prepare the people. That's what a watchman does. In a literal sense, the watchman is the one that stands on the tower and he's looking and he sees the enemy coming. He sees the enemy coming. Before they get there, the watchman turns and he blows the trumpet. And the certain sounds of the trumpet tells the people to prepare for war because an, an, an enemy is coming to destroy. So now the watchman is, is explaining, is giving the information to make sure that they are prepared so when the threat comes, they can handle it. That's what we're doing as watchmen. Y'all all right? Okay. Uh, so, one of the things that we... Uh, sleeping on is that we don't understand how our enemies feel about us. Okay? That's why I say gathering the troop in defiance of terrorism. The terrorism is the different things that are put in the system to keep us in a d destroyed state. And we got to fight against those things. Okay? And we have been, we have been uh, oppressed and beat so long, we are not. We we are not only are we considered useless to this to to our enemies because they call us uh what, what's the word obsolete farm machinery. When they have when when the, when your enemies consider when our enemies consider that we are useless, what do you do with useless? What do you do with something that's useless? You throw it away. When we was in slavery, some would make it easy to understand. When we were in slavery, they weren't throwing us away at all. They needed to keep breeding us. They said, you're valuable. Keep having them babies. Keep on. They were pr pr making the women have 1925 children. Slave this, slave that. This is a pup, a buck and all that. Making us, that was slave labor. We were valuable then. Y'all follow me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mating our women. This is terrible. I realize that. Mating our men and women like cattle, like horses. That's what they did to us. But that, that was value. But now, they said, well, they're, they're growing, like the Exodus said, they're getting too much. And now we don't need them. So when you become, when they don't need you, they said, well, what are we going to do with them? 
And then now we're in the ghettos. Now we're in our communities committing crimes against each other, robbing each other, stealing each other, because it's, a, it's what we were taught. We learned that. So don't get me wrong. The, the, the hatred and the things that we do to each other, it's a learned behavior. You feel me? And we got to correct that. But nevertheless, that's where we are. Our minds have been, have been turned upside down to bring evil and violence towards each other. And the, and, and the enemies that put us in the condition and say, well, we ain't get no use out of this group at all. The ones, that we, the ones that we can't exploit, we'll keep them. But the majority of them in the ghetto shooting and this and that and the other, we just need to get rid of them. That's how they think. That's how they feel. And they said, well, the best thing that we could do is just make prisons. They wouldn't at least make money off them in that way, put them in prison. So there's a, all, of these, all, all of these concerted efforts are used to destroy and get rid of us. Y'all feel me? And because we are, we are so evil among each other, it leaves everybody else with this hatred towards us because the scriptures say that we have hated. Not only because of the scriptures, they just hate us, period, because we're the Lord's people. Okay, let's open up that book. Let's show the book on the screen. Because this is the consensus of the nations. Uh, let's read the Bible. Hold up before we do that. Give me uh, uh, Micah 4 and 11. Micah 4 and 11. I'm going to read the 10th verse later on. Micah chapter 4 and verse 11. Now also, many nations are gathered against thee. Many nations are gathered together against us. That's something for us to remember. If the nations are gathered against us, the another part of the scriptures say, uh, gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. It's the same thing. We are a hated people. And if the people feel that way about us, that means in the back of their mind, they're like, how can we get rid of them? How can we get rid of them? And we as leaders are supposed to see the threat and to prepare you for the, for the thought patterns of an enemy. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Uh, read. Read that again. Now also... Many nations are gathered against thee. Against the nation of Israel. Against us. Greed. That say, let her be defiled. Let her, the nation of Israel, be defiled and destroyed. That's how they feel about us. Like I said before, they wanted us to have them babies. Now they want your babies dead. They don't want you having babies now. The slavery, they had a sister. How, how many, how many, uh, one, one what do they call it? A winch? Uh, and they breeded her. How many, how many kids do you think that this one woman would have? Talk to me. Just give me a number. How many? How many? Somebody said 10. How many? Well, you'd be more than that, right? One woman would have over 10 kids in slavery. Over and over and over again because they were mass breeding us. But now when you go to the hospital, you after your second, your first or second child, they're telling you to start doing all kinds of things because they say you're risking health. And you, you see this? They don't want us having any more babies at all. They, still, they, they come inside the room with all these pamphlets about doing this to your tubes and this and that and the other because they want you to stop. But why they didn't do that in slavery? Something else, right? So you cover that with 19 million babies destroyed since 1973. That's a concerted effort to destroy us. You hear me? So just think about that. This is real talk. Real talk, right? So many nations are gathered against us. We need to be mindful of that thing. Okay? Now, again, showing you how they feel about us. We're going to read it in this book here. Show the book on the screen. The choice this is the book I was talking about last week. The Issue of Black Survival in America by Samuel F. Yet. Okay? The black, man in, is, the black man is obsolete in today's white America. Mm, I got a few books that got titles similar to this. Let's go inside the book and get that page. That we, now, we read parts of this last week, but this is the paragraph that I did not read, which I did want to read because it's straight up clearly gives you exactly the point that we were mentioning. Even though we did bring it out last week, but this is the exact paragraph that I wanted, okay? So if you want to know what we read last week, just go back and look at last class because I don't want to repeat the same thing. Uh, right there. Start with similarly read down. Yes, sir. Similarly. This, so, so the threat and tactics. This is terrorism. We talk, we, now we're talking about terrorism. Read. 
Similarly, research conducted in October 1968, consisting of 1,176 interviews with a representative national sample of adult Americans, revealed that only 18% of the American public would protest, even nonviolently, mass repression of American blacks. Did y'all hear that? The, all, it says only 18 would even get upset. That's what it means when it says protest even nonviolently if there was mass repression of black people. Eight, 18%. That's less, that's less than a fifth. That means out of every 100, only 18 of them would, would just say, please don't, don't do that to them. The rest of them be like, the hell with them. Let them burn. Read. An even smaller number, only 9%, <laughs> would resist with necessary violence. The official and only, only a dime's worth of a dollar might punch somebody in the face if they were talking about destroying us as a race. This was a real study that was done by the Navy. Okay? This was a book. I was looking for this book for years. Read would resist with necessary violence the official mass repression of black Americans. The physical, what? The physical... The uh, official mass repression. Mass oppression of black Americans. Go ahead. Oh, oh, official. Go ahead. Yes, sir. These findings were made in a study for the National Commission of the Causes and Prevention of Violence and were reported in the November 1970 issue of Psychology Today by California psychologists Dr. James McEvoy the third and Dr. Rodney Stark. So you see this? Wow. Read on. The sociologist asked those interviewed to imagine that the government has just arrested and imprisoned That's many the part that I didn't read last week. That's the part there. Read that paragraph again. The sociologist asked those interviewed to imagine that the government... Turn it up a little bit, but I want to make sure that your voice is getting to their ears. Just a little bit. Come on. Read it again. Yes, sir. Sociologists asked those interviewed to imagine that the government has just arrested and imprisoned many of the Negroes in your community, even though there had been no trouble. Characterize even if we didn't, if we were not a committing crime. That's what they're saying. Even if they were doctors, lawyers, all that. That's what they're saying. Regardless of what we were, even if they weren't causing any trouble. Read it again. Those soci the sociologists asked those interviewed. These the groups that we was talking about earlier. Go ahead. To imagine. Imagine this is what he said. Imagine if the government had just arrested and imprisoned many of the Negroes in your community, even if there had not been to any trouble to you. That's what he's saying. Read. Characterized, characterizing their responses, McEvoy and Stark wrote, the overwhelming majority of white Americans would apparently be good Germans if the government turned to massive racial repression. Only 18% would protest nonviolently, and 9% would turn to violence. Blacks, understandably, would be more willing to act, but even so, activists are a minority. 43% would use civil disobedience, and one-fourth would attempt counter-violence. This may reflect a pragmatic, pra pragmatic judgment. Go ahead. If that, su if that, such, that if such things came to pass, blacks would be wiped out if they rebelled. You see that? So how do how the nations feel about us, brothers and sisters? They don't give a damn. Okay? They don't give a damn. And this is exactly why when we was in Egypt, that's the reason why uh, Pharaoh put that edict out there. They loved us being in captivity, but when there was word that there was a deliverer, they were trying to kill off Moses. You feel me? They said this, this deliverer that they're talking about is trying to, re, trying to take the slaves from me. And that's exactly how they feel about us, about us giving you this Bible. They said them Israelites are trying to take my slaves from me. So we want to kill them too. 19 million dead. Huh? And they, and they already got the people believing that we are worth destroying. Only like 8%, 9% might even throw a fist if there was mass repression. This was in the 1970s, and that did not change. Give me my book, Time Life, the thing that I read last week. Because everybody said, well, that was in 1969 or 1968, in 1970. They don't feel that way now. Let's see. Time, I read this part last week, but I'm gonna just, this is clear. 
uh, special edition time beyond the year 2000. This was the 1992 issue. This was a magazine that I had. And that's, that's, it says what to expect in the new millennium. The, let's go inside the magazine. The article is too many people. It ain't talking about too many white people. Because when they talk about, hey, the white doctors don't go inside the birthing rooms of white people and, and start handing out pamphlets telling them to stop having babies. Not, they don't do that. I worked in a hospital. I know how they deal. Y'all feel me? They give them all kinds of fertilization clothes. Because a, a lot of them can't even have kids. So they give them all kinds of treatments, send them to this. Uh, uh, fertilization clinics, they do all of that to try to have as many babies as they can. So it's not too many people. What they're really saying is too many of you. That's what they're saying. It's too many of you. The Egyptians weren't, when they had us in captivity in Egypt, they weren't saying it's too many Egyptians. That's the reason why the Lord killed their firstborn. But they weren't talking about, they weren't talking about too many people on that. They were saying it's too many of the Israelites getting, getting overpopulated. That's how they feel about us today. Y'all all right? So when y'all see articles like too many people, they're talking about you and me. We're the ones that's not desired. So our job is to counteract that. How do we organize the troops in defiance of the terroristic acts to destroy us? Y'all all right? Don't, like I often say, don't feel loathed in your spirit. <laughs> the white men don't want us. I feel so bad. Mm -mm. Mm. God wants you. You're the people of God. I know a lot of times because we think we said, damn, the white man don't want us, and we feel like our, we lost value because he don't want us. Some of our people come in the doors with that hole in their head. We have to recognize that and say, brother, sister, no. You're the people of God. You don't need to worry about them. You are the people of the most high. The, the oil that you need to fill up that hole in your head is these scriptures, meaning who you are and the beauty in you and what God sees in you and the beauty that he sees in you. And that's the reason why I particularly try to encourage all of you to use your talents because you are great people. You are, you'll have potential that is beyond your own. Th I, I tend to try to think beyond your own thinking. But I don't think I'm good at this. I said, no, you are good at that. Try it anyway. Push yourself because the greatness is in you. And it takes a leader to know how to, to, know how to pull things out of you that you didn't even think you had. We look at ourselves like we can't do this. We can't do that. No, you can do that and more. Don't worry about what the nations say. You're God's people. Don't you ever look down on yourself to say what you can't do. God said that you are a special and you are chosen people unto me. And that's what we better remember and act accordingly. That's the reason why I hate that mediocrity, laid back spirit. We, let, we start to let things get raggedy. Y'all see how I be acting like when I come to keeping the school clean and all that. I said, why are we letting this happen? Why are we letting that happen? That's a bad habit. Don't do that. Because I expect greatness out of you. And if I expect greatness out of you, you damn sure better expect it out of yourselves. Okay? Uh, let's read the article. Too many people. If the environment is already threatened by overpopulation. Overpopulation by black people. They ain't talking about white folks now. They're trying to have as many babies as they want. This is talking about us. But they slick in how they write it. Go ahead. What would the world be like with twice as many inhabitants? Come on. You wouldn't want to be there. You wouldn't want to be there. You, what? I don't want to be too many Negroes in my community. I'm telling you, this is, what I, this is the psychology. You move in, Jack moves out. <laughs> Because that's what they say. It's too many of you. This is where they get this, this thing from. Go ahead. Read. The state of the environment in the latter part of the next century will be determined largely by one factor. Human population. Human population of black and Hispanic people. Go ahead. If the species doubles its numbers by if 2050. blacks and Hispanics double the numbers. Why do you think, why do you think they got so many prisons? They said we, got to, we, we, we can't physically do what that experiment said do. That'll cause a riot all over, this, all over the world on some level. Y'all feel me? You just can't just, I mean, they said that if, if it was done, how would people feel about it? But there would be some problems on some level. So they said we got to be slick. We, we got to be slick in how we can get rid of them, so to speak, without them being a problem to us. That's how white folks deal with us. Let's, let's have laws that trump them up in crimes so we can put them in prison and get paid. And prison industry went booming. Booming. Watch that uh, documentary.
called 13, the 13th Amendment. You get a good example of what I'm talking about. And you see how the numbers over just a few years quadrupled in millions. That's how they dealt with this. Go ahead, read. If the species doubles its numbers by 2050 to nearly 11 billion, humanity may complete the, de the devastation that accelerated so steeply in this century. So they're talking about humanity. No, I mean white folks. They don't like to be outnumbered. Read. Such unabated expansion. Such unabated expansion. This is what, hold it. Can, can we find that clip with Bill Gates? You know what I'm talking about? Let's put that up there. Unabated expansion. Let's break that down. What is he talking about? Expansion means you having babies. Let's just make it simple. You black women having babies. Expansion of your race. To, well, unabated. Y'all know what these words mean, but I'm, I just like explaining things. Unabated means that we ain't paying attention to it. If we allow these black women, these black people to continue having babies, we will be swamped by black people. You know, they wanna, you know the word they really want to call it. Huh? We will be swamped by them. So we need to abate. We need to cut it off. That's what they're saying. We need to find ways to shrink it down. This is, this is 1992 talking about the, the new millennial, the 2000s, where we're at now. And many things have been brought up to wipe us out, like all these different uh, laboratory diseases that's coming all out here now to try to wipe us out. That's not an accident. Read. You found it? I mean, you found a video? Pull into it. Go ahead, play it. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. See, that's the word uh, the I word needed. Population. First, we got population. That's what we're talking about. It ain't talking about regular population. The too many people is you, you, you and me. Get that again. Population. Algebra. But let's let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Uh, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Stop. But if we do a real good job, if we do a real good job, we could cut that number. How the hell you think that's going to work? With vaccines, he's telling you, vaccines, play, play, just get that clip right there again. This is terrorism. This is terror. To know this is terror on your mind. Play it. High school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Uh, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, Stop. health care. Stop. How would new vaccines cut down population? He named them. How would vaccines cut down? Because the question was about population. He said, if we do a real good job with new vaccines, how in the world would vaccines have anything to do with population? Huh? Talk to me. Huh? By killing you. By killing you. That's what he's saying. And they're talking about making you well because the issue is about too many people. So how do you get rid of too many people? Through vaccines. He's telling you. Go ahead. Then he said health care. We get rid of too many people through I told you I worked at a hospital. I know. But in health care. That means they're jacking people up in there. What's the next one? Care, Repro reproductive, reproductive health services. Reproductive health services. That's you sisters in the clinics. He ain't talking about doing that to white folks. That's talking about to us. Go ahead. We could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. 10 or 15 percent. That's a big number. Y'all all right? If that's not terrorism, I don't know what is. That puts us on pins and needles everywhere we go. We're worried about are these people, is, is, is this next person trying to do this to me? That puts us in in a scared state. Y'all see why the reason why we need the Most High? This is the reason why the Most High said we got to gather ourselves together. Now, we have some very intelligent people that work in all of these fields. 
Our job is to look out for these things that you're in there. A lot of our sisters work in the healthcare field. They work in, the, in these different fields that we were looking at. They work in these things. And when you see something coming down the line that's destructive to your people, you make your business a style. I don't give a damn what they do. You don't allow them because a lot of people, there's, there's been people that worked in these fields that reported it and they got in trouble. So what? You don't sit by and let them destroy your people. That's the same thing that happened with Shifra and Pua. That's basically the same thing. She, that, that's basically the same thing. She was in, they were in charge of dealing with the women and having babies. They either came down to basically do what Bill Gates is talking about. Destroy these boys. They say no. And they trusted in God. So you sisters that work in these areas, you need to trust in God too and do not do Satan's bidding. You brothers, same thing with you. You working in these certain jobs where you see certain things that come down the line. You can get in trouble too. So what? Do not be a traitor to your people. The Most High will look out for you. Believe me when I tell you that. You hear me? Don't have that kind of blood on your hands. Huh? You put in these positions, believe me, you're watchmen in your fields. You see the danger coming. You've been dealing with all of the different science and stuff, and you recognize what you see. He said, no, I already know this is going to be a problem. We're not doing this. You warn my people. That's what you do. I don't give a damn what they do. The most high, listen to me, man. The most high is going to deliver us out of this thing. We just have to trust in him. That's what we have to do. There's, they can't stop this. They cannot stop this. The most high said, but I want you to lean on me. The same kind of faith that we had when we were coming out of Egypt. You imagine we're running and we get to the water's edge and all of a sudden, we start doubting God because we in our carnal mind, we can't see how we're going to be delivered. Moses, you brought us all the way out here for us to get destroyed because we lost faith. That's, we cannot do that. We have to keep our faith in what this Bible says. Y'all feel me? I'm serious about that. So let us remember that. Now, y'all want to say something real quick. I'm trying to link what I just said to because I'm skipping the part of my lesson to get to this point. I would, I would like to, Bishop. The thing that I noticed in that TED um, interview with Bill Gates is that Bishop was touching on the nations. And he said that, it was saying earlier that we'll be hated of all nations. You have to see how comfortable they are. He's able to stand there and all those people that works in medical, uh, educational, uh, whatever field they're in, they partake, they're partaking in that environment. They're there with Bill Gates. And so even those, those things that we see that he's saying, they all agree with him. They're not fighting. They believe, yeah, we've got too many people. It's too many of them. They all agree with him, but yet they'll educate, yet they'll be your doctor, but they still all agree with Bill Gates. There was no difference in them. In them could stood up there and took the mic. They all agree with the same. Didn't make no difference what was Bill Gates. They all feel the same way. And not, like Bishop said, that's scary in of itself. Mm -hmm. But don't worry. We made it this far. Y'all feel me? And there's not the least grain. We just read it out of that Bible. Not the least grain of Israel is going to be left. So remember that. They're not getting rid. Even the ones that did get murdered and all of that and killed and poisoned and all that, their spirits is with the most high. Y'all feel me? Give me that in the Bible. Give me uh, Revelation, uh, what is it, 6? And nine, I think it is, right? Let's read that. Revelation six and nine, I think it is. Revelation chapter six and verse nine. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So we're not worrying about death. We're not worrying about what they do. We're going to try our best to fulfill our mission on this earth. But if, if the most high calls us home, he calls us home. Y'all all right? And ain't nobody, nobody is going to stop us from getting the kingdom if the most I mean for us to get it. So that's why we ain't worrying about nothing. Well, the only thing we need to do is keep moving the way we're moving, the way the most I told us to move and gather the people. Uh, read it again. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice and saying. And they cried in the spirit world because our people were murdered that was slain for the word of God. That would be us. 
that was slain for the word of the Most High. We're in the spirit world and we see what's happening. Because the spirit never dies. Let me say that to you too. Because a lot of people are afraid of death because they don't understand how death works. You've been, we've been here many times. Y'all feel, y'all feel what I'm saying? Right. And I'm, I'm being serious about that because I really want y'all to understand that. There's no fear in death when you know what death really is. I'm going to explain it. Death is only, uh, uh, death is explained as a separation from spirit from your body. Your spirit never dies. That's what the point I'm making. Y'all all right? The spirit in us never dies. It's only the flesh. The body houses the spirit. Your spirit actually dwells in your head behind the eyes. You, you feel me? The body is basically the house that the spirit travels in. When the body gets too weak to hold the spirit, the spirit leaves the body. That is what is known as death. Okay? Now I got to, I don't want to deviate. Yeah, but because I, 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 I kind of said, I hope y'all get it. I can go in the scriptures and show y'all how all that works. It's in the book of Job. How many of y'all don't know what I'm talking about? Hands up. How many of y'all don't? Hands up high so I'll know if I should touch it or not. How many of y'all do know what I'm talking about? Okay, a good amount, so I ain't got to touch it. All right. Uh, I guess I give private lessons to those that don't. Y'all all right? Uh, but basically, like I said, when, you, when, when the body gets too weak, that's why when you get shot, stabbed, or whatever, the body cannot contain the spirit anymore. The spirit leaves, and it has to be born back again. That's the reason why the Most High said that he'll bring you back in the third or the fourth generation. Of, that's what it's talking about because you come back. That's how Moses was able to say, the Moses was able to say, if you did not keep the commandments of the Lord, he says, thou shall be brought. He said, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. That was said to us in, in the wilderness. Did those people that Moses was speaking to, did they go on ships? That literal group? No. So that meant they came back many generations later and ended up going on the ship because he was literally speaking to those speak to those spirits. Those spirits never died. You feel me? And even if you don't come, because some people say, well, he didn't have children. So what his spirit comes, you simply come through your relatives. You ain't none of us going nowhere. That's how he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's how that works. Because they going into captivity. There ain't nothing they could do to get out of it. The scriptures say, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers because they did the crimes to us in the past. The most I'm going to bring them very same spirits back and kill, get them for what they did to us many generations ago. Now, I'm going to put a smile on your face real quick. Give me Revelation 1 and 7. I say I got to put some smiles on some on faces right now. I say I see the spirits getting all woo. Revelation 1 and 7, just real quick, then, we, then we're going to get into our thing. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Behold, he cometh with the with clouds. Jesus Christ coming with the clouds. That's what he coming with the power and the angels. Hundreds of millions of angels coming to kick ass, to deliver us from our from the hand of our enemies. Go ahead. And every eye shall see him. And every eye shall see him. Shall see Jesus, the black Jesus. Man, they're gonna lose their mind when the first of all, when they see he's gonna have one foot on the earth and the other one on the sea. It's gonna scare the living everything out of them. They're going to put the life back in them to kill them. <laughs> Read. <laughs> and they also which pierced him. Did you hear that part? Every eye shall see Christ and what? And they also which pierced him. The ones that stuck that sword in Christ's side, they are going to be on this earth and they're going to see Christ. And Christ is going to know who did it. He's going to know who did it. That's why it's recorded that way. Remember me? That's how this is going to go. So ain't nobody escaping. Nobody escaping. So brothers and sisters, don't you worry. You're living in the greatest time ever. Right. Because you know this. Think about the generations of our people that was catching all this hell and never knew what they, never knew anything about what we're talking about. It's a new day, brothers and sisters. The kingdom is coming. Right. I'd love to hear that song, uh, Bishop Kanai. And uh, Sister Payard, there was a, they, they had a song and one of our Passovers that I loved. And I recorded it. I got it somewhere. And she was sing, Sister Payard was singing that, Mother Payard. She was singing that thing. And I loved the way it sounded. You know, but I forgot. It was some, some men that was on it. They ain't even with us anymore. So I, we might have to find some new backup singers <laughs> to, 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 to get that thing going. But anyway, 
It was, it was a lovely song. I love it. So where we at? What was... Uh, Still in verse 7? Yeah. So we read that, right? Yes, Did sir. we finish it? No. Come on. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of oh, him. Oh, man, we needed that. And everybody going to cry and scream when they see that big, black, mean Savior. <laughs> Damn. And he said, he, he's, he, can you imagine the kind of terror he going to bring on them? Like he did the Egyptians. He bring out thick darkness when he was tearing their behinds up. You could feel the darkness. <laughs> and they was hearing bodies being thrown in death and can't see nothing. <laughs> stuff like that. That's, that's some good stuff. I'm going to read that stuff one of these days. I, I love medit meditating on the, that kind of thing there, man. That's, that's the kind of saving power we got coming towards us. And we were in that time period, brothers and sisters. And we were in that time. We should give the Lord a hand for that thing. All right. Now I'm going. I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. I'm still dealing with terrorism. Okay, terrorism. I talked about James Bird. I remember speaking about that. James Bird and the different. James Bird was a brother that was that was dragged to his death in Jasper, Texas. And this is this is why I talk about having empathy, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Sometimes we have to put ourselves in the in the situation of others, so you can feel their pain. So you can feel what they went through. And that's why I said that last week. I said, I believe it was last week. And I said that imagine being a full standing human being, a man, with your full body parts and everything in order. And then you're being chained up and dragged to your death. And, and percentages of his life is being ripped from him as he's being dragged over that gravel road. Till he's dead. And you have to imagine when came the point where life left his body? How much of his body was destroyed as he was being dragged to death? And imagine that. Imagine what we do to each other. Imagine how we shoot down each other and stab and do all kinds of things. Imagine the pain that they... You got to put yourself in your people's position. That's what, that's what causes us to like, you know what? I can't do that to my brother. We can work this thing out. Whatever the issue is. I'm thinking about my sister, Tiffany Carter, and how she's feeling about learning about uh, fragments that's, that's being found every few weeks, new, new fragments of her son being found, that's reopening up the wounds. Think about the terror that that sister's going through. There's some horrible stuff. Some horrible stuff. You got it? Let's, just, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, he was found here in Televille, Mississippi on 37 with his head dismembered from his body. And, um, you know, for someone to tell me what has transpired with my child, when all he wanted was some help to get back and forth to where he needed to go, and then to find him later, you know, with his head severed from his body, it says a whole lot about this community as a whole. So they found his head from his, was that it? Was that it? Was that the timestamp? Okay, go ahead. Justice for Rasheem Carter. Justice for Rasheem Carter is like justice for all of us. Okay? This is these are things that we have to remember. Is that it? Okay. All right. So, like I said, the wounds of my sisters being opened over and over again. Every time they come out with a new discovery of new re of of more remains of my sister of, of, of my sister's son. It's horrible, man. It's horrible. You sisters, you have babies. You holding sons. Imagine you lost that son like this. And then they finding parts of your son over a period of months and this and that. Imagine the pain, how you would feel. 
I almost cried when I was talking to the sister. I know somebody was like, you all weak and shit. I'm putting myself in her, I'm putting myself, and I can't really do that because I'm not her as a woman, you know what I'm saying? But I can, I can imagine what it feels like to lose somebody like, like a son or a daughter and, and having, her, having those wounds reopen up. Go ahead. Terrorism. I'm attorney Ben Crump, along with attorney Carlos Moore, who happens to be in court today, and Arthur Reed and our legal team, we have the honor of representing the family of Rasheem Carter. His mother is present here with us, Miss Tiffany Carter, who will also address you. As you all recall from last time we assembled, we talked about the fact that the family disputed and rejected the first narrative that was offered by law enforcement that her son, Rasheem Carter, who had went missing and was found with his head decapitated was natural causes. No, well, no, no. it was not natural causes. We, we refused to accept that. Why well, sound low? Turn it up, brothers. His Pay attention to the sound. refused to accept that. His aunt refused to accept that. The mother of his... How old Seven-year-old Seven daughter refused to accept that. We told you, his mother told you about the text messages that she had got from Rasheem, talking about he felt his life was in danger to this some what I degree. To get to. I'm trying to remember why I pulled this, because there was a certain part that I wanted to get to. It's coming up now, and I got my thoughts together. Go ahead. And text the messages. fact that he was being chased by trucks of individuals who were chasing him mm -hmm. and how he went to the police department to ask for help and safety being carried to the next county and they refused to do that okay is that it okay he went to the police station to try to get help because he felt his life was in danger and to be transferred to the next so he tried to be transferred to safety, right? He's looking for he's looking for safety. He said, I "Got these Edomites, these white people that's trying to kill me." So you would think to run to the police station, right? And he gets there, and the police basically don't, according to the reports, they basically said, "No, you can't sleep here, or whatever," and they put him back out there. Now, my next video is I'm just trying to see something. Put my next video up. Hey, Bishop. Yes, sir. Hey, what you want to bring out? Can you imagine, though, you know, you running for your life from mm -hmm. these people, right? Mm -hmm. You're running for your life. And you, the only thing you can think about is getting to the police station. Mm -hmm. Some type of hope. That's yep. some type of hope that you have in your mind. If I get to this police station, I'll be all right. And then you get there. You get in through the doors of these people that are supposed to protect and serve. And they tell you to get out. Can you imagine that? That's terrorism. That's what Bishop is talking about. That's terrorism right there. So he went in there to tell them there's a mob that's trying to destroy me. And he's in there and they basically say, you can't stay here. That's equivalent to something that happened in history. And that's what I'm about to bring out now. I'm about to make a transition in terms of understanding. If he's going in there and he's looking for a refuge, like the city of refuge that the Bible speaks of, He's looking for safety, and you basically saying, no, you can't stay here. You got to go back out there. That is no different from the lynch mob that's coming inside the police station to take the man out to destroy him. Even though it's not worded that way, even though it's not said that way, but it's the same thing. Here's a clip that illustrates that. boys are going to get a fair trial as God is my witness. Your witness, Mayor, is that the same God that witnessed you all putting black folks into slavery and stealing the Indians' land? Papa Joe, you ought to be working on saving your black soul. Shit. I'm working on saving my black ass. <laughs> you boys don't worry about it. So you'll get your fair trial. And my name ain't, uh, now uh you my notice name. Now, yeah, I know we got to be getting how they like to mess with us, right, Captain? Said we let it roll too long. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just break into another. So basically, they got my man locked up in the jail, right? You're going to be like, where's the correlation at? The correlation is coming up and what I was talking about earlier. Go ahead, play on. Uh, shut up, Tom. Hey, right. <laughs> Thank you, man, Tom. <laughs> this is what they used to do. Now, before you play any further, this is what the Klan used to do. The Klan used to come in. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? But the lynch mobs will go inside the jail because they'll find some trumped up charge or something. They say, oh, he looked at a white woman. He, the same way they did Emmett Till, so you can understand. They went into that man's house, that boy's house, went past the cousins and all that, took him out to destroy him. That's what they would do inside these jails. When they would be in the jail, he said, there's a level of protection in the jail. The jailer would say they would release him to the Klan. They will release this man to the, they will release the man to the clan. And that's how you have situations like they have burnings where they burn them at the stake, stuff like this, they lynch them, drag them in the middle. Of, that's how all this stuff happened because they allowed it to happen that way. Y'all all right? Terrorism. So what Rasheem Carter went through is basically an equivalent of this. You going in there hoping to get some kind of protection. They said, no, we're going to, even though you told us that there's a mob of people that's trying to kill you, we're going to allow you to be out there anyway so that they can get you, which is the same damn thing as the Klan literally coming inside the jail and taking you out to do, to destroy him. There's so much ugliness in this damn case. It's unbelievable. But that's, that's, that's some real terrorism there. You feel me? And the Lord, God, the Lord hears this thing. The Lord hears this thing. I pray for, I pray for my sister, man. This, this, this is evil as hell. But this is the reality of where we're at. And this is the reason why I say the things that we do, knowing this, how in the world? And I'm speaking, when I was down there, I'm speaking to regular people. These ain't Israelites. I'm speaking to regular people in the community. I say, if we call and call ourselves honoring the death on honoring the uh the memory of my brother that was destroyed when this evil and bones are being and remains are being found every such and such imagining the trauma and the turmoil that's going on with my sister they say you know what sister we're here to support you and we want some answers and we want some justice and the way we're gonna get it is that when it comes these daggone evil wicked ass holidays we ain't buying a damn thing we ain't buying nothing that's the least we can do don't come on a rally and rah, rah, rah to go back and do the same mess. Shut it down. Don't spend nothing. You, that, ain't, that ain't stopping you from having food on your table. Come Christmas, don't, don't be in, forget about the mall. Let the mall go. Let, let the Easter egg go. Shoot, I need them eggs. Huh? Let them turkeys alone. Huh? Cut all that out. You just do that and billions of dollars is lost. That's what the most I want because the most I ain't even with these wicked holidays anyway. So you'll be doing both a favor. You'll be on God's side and your side at the same time. Plus you'll show this, this sister that, you know what, my people are really for me. Look how my people have come together to support my efforts to get some justice for what happened to my son. And because we don't do that, this is what makes it easy for them to have experiments like we was reading about earlier. It's easy to exterminate the people that don't seem to even care about themselves. But if they knew that there was going to be a major, re a major revolt, they'd think twice. But they know we won't do a damn thing but party and bullshit. We won't do anything in the real, in the real world. Come Christmas, we ain't buying a damn thing, nothing. Come New Year's, uh, what's these other things? Valentine's Day, Easter, Memorial Day, none of that garbage. And then you, when they ask you why, they say, you know the reason why we ain't doing none of this? First of all, because the, it's the word of the Lord. We're the Israelites. You tell them that first. Then you say, and also because we want justice for what happened to my brother. Justice for what happened to Sandra Bland. We want justice for what happened to uh, uh, Mike Brown. We want justice for what happened to Trayvon Martin. We want justice. That's how we deal. Go ahead. Play on. You boys just back off. I can't let you vigilantes come in here and take these free uh, Negroville citizens and do what you got to do. For God's sake, stand up for yourself, Tom. I'm sorry, Mayor, but uh, they got guns. Pause it. Don't let it go no further. Y'all looking at this here, but that's how they actually did it. 
Y'all feel me? Because they, you, you already know there's black people in jail, and they're they looking at the Klan coming in to get them. And they used to literally let them take them out and kill them. I know of a story. I'm trying to remember the details of it, and I'll just say this real, real quick. Me and Deacon Ace have used to work in the same place, and there was a librarian that worked in the hospital where we used to work together at. And she was old enough to remember things like this here. Okay, she's probably 100 and something, about nearly 100 now. She's, she's old. She was volunteering, so she would run the library. And she would tell a story. She told me a story like this here. I wish I would have recorded it. I should have recorded it. I ain't had no recovery. I'm on the job, so I ain't had nothing. But I remember her telling me, she said it was a situation where there was a black man that had money, and he got into an accident. And they, they tried to charge him with the accident, so they had him locked up. And she said that there was a situation where a mob went in there and did just what we're talking about, took him out of the jail and took him in the street and killed him. She told me, she told me this. So she lived this. She was a little girl when that happened. Y'all hear me? Imagine what it's like to, to hear and, and to witness something like that. She remembered that thing. In her, she was damn near in her 90s telling me this. Go ahead, man. Play it. So the clan is there to pick up the keys. What, wait, whoa, 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 what is this? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so y'all get the point, right? Y'all get the point. But what that would normally have been, that would have literally been clansmen. That's why they dress like clansmen, because clansmen used to really do that. Y'all feel me? I just wanted to get that thing in there. Just wanted to get, huh? Huh? The Savior coming. I, I, I likes that thing. Damn, they glorifying violence. No. Hey, give me, because uh, I always got to be careful. Give me Thessalonians 1 and 6. Shoot. <laughs> you know, you always got to protect yourself. They say, oh, there they go advocating violence. No, no. No, no. Give me that. Shoot. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Sin is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. I'm only talking about recompense and tribulation to them that, that trouble you. And God said that is a righteous thing. Right. So when the time comes, brothers and sisters, when, when our salvation comes, ain't no time to be crying for no enemies. It's time for them to die. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. I'm, t I'm telling you straight. Time for your enemies to die. Give me that in wisdom of Solomon. I know I'm bordering on some 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 hard words right now, but I'm 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 going I'm going to ride with the Most High. Uh, eighteen and seven, wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter eighteen and verse seven. So if thy people was accepted, both the salvation of the righteous, the salvation of the righteous was displayed in that clip. He was delivering the righteous from being locked up. What the hell? What the hell is a white man on stolen land locking me up in a cage for? Well, my brothers, go ahead. And destruction of the enemies. So we, we welcome that. That's a righteous thing to want that thing. We've accepted the, the, we accepted the salvation of, our, of the righteous, and we also celebrate and, and accept the destruction of our enemies. So that's it for that clip. Now, let me, let me wind it on down. Let me wind it on down. Let me wind it on down. It's Titus 1 and 5, then we're going to go to Corinthians. I'm going to close it up with this here. Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. For this cause, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. So when I talk about organizing the troops, well, I need that, that, that scripture. Hold up. Give me, let me get that. Let me go back and get that one. I, I have the word troop there. I need that. Give me one second. We come back to this here. Read that Titus again. Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. For this cause left I thee in Crete. That thou shouldest set in order. That thou shalt set in order. This is the leaders now. We got to set leaders up. Go ahead. The things that are wanting. The things that are lacking. So it is our job to set up watchmen, to set up leaders, to set up elders, to set up department heads, leaders. Go ahead. And ordain elders in every city. And to ordain elders everywhere we go. That's how exponential growth happens because we have to set that up. This is a beautiful thing. The most I gave us the ability to know how to organize the people. That's wonderful. I'm glad to be in that position to be able to be a part of God's magnificent work. And I am no greater than you. 
All of us have the opportunity to do this. Y'all feel me? I'm just a spoke in the ladder, just like everybody else. Y'all feel me? But we all have a job to do. Uh, give me Micah 5 and 1. Micah 5 and 1. Because we read Micah, uh, the fourth chapter, where it said that many nations are gathered together against us. And in Micah 4 and 10, it says that we must be in pain and labor to bring forth Zion. So there's work involved in setting up leaders and setting up order and elders. There's work involved. Now let's read the fifth uh, chapter, verse 1. Micah chapter 5 and verse 1. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Gather thyself together in troops. So when we read Zephaniah 2 and 1, it just said gather together. Let's read that real quick. Zephaniah 2, I'm going to show you the difference. Gather thyself together in troops. Not just gathering together. Read uh, uh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We crystal clear that we're not liked at all. We're not desired. We're hated of all nations. Y'all know the position on how they feel about us. So the Lord said, don't worry about that. I got you. You just gather together and keep my commandments. But once we gather together and keep the commandments, that's not the end of the gathering. If all of us are just keeping the commandments, there's a certain level of order when it comes to how we order our bodies or how we order our immediate space. Y'all dig me? We're all keeping the commandments. But where's the order in knowing how to set up different things that we all need as a body? That's where the troops come in. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If we're all, let me say it again to make it crystal clear. The Bible says that all of us are responsible for keeping the commandments of God, correct? So we keep the commandments of God as individuals. But as we're keeping these commandments of God as individuals, where are the systems at? Where are the departments at? Where are the businesses at? Where are the medical teams? Where are the doctors where are the teachers? Where are the electricians? Where are the mechanics? You feel me? Where are the fire safety people? Where is hospitality? Where is the, the IT? Where is the, so, where is the social media teams? Where is the decor? Where are the people that deals with the food? Where the, so all of us are keeping the commandments, but you need troops in all of these areas. Y'all dig it? Y'all follow what I'm saying? So it's not enough for us to just be uh, 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 keeping the commandments as an individual. The Most High said, assemble together because we are the people of God and we have to learn how to operate as a nation, as a functioning nation with all of the different aspects of the nation to help the whole car move forward. The electrical system work with the fuel system, works with the HVAC system, work with the suspension system. But all of these things work together to make the car move. That's how we are. Y'all feel me? That's the greatness of understanding troops as opposed to just gathering together. But we have to do both. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So that's what I wanted to read about the troops. Now go to where I was at before. Micah yeah. chapter 5 and verse 1. Now gather thyself in troops. O daughter of troops. O daughter of troops. O daughter of troops. Okay. Now, now we're understanding about the troops. Uh, we, we dealt with the... Uh, with the definitions last week. I see you got it up there. Okay. Um, we brought it in last week. Let's read it since you put it up there. I was going to skip it because we already dealt with it. Like him? Yes, sir. Troops. Synonyms. Soldiers. Armed forces. Service personnel. Fighting men or women. So troops. Troops. It could be a band of soldiers, it could be a, uh, armed forces, service personnel, fighting men and women. All of these things will be classified as a troop. So that means there's different functions of the nations that are the different functions of the nation that can be categorized as this system here, as this system here, or this department here, or that department there. All of these things work together and they have their connectability to each other. In other words, like I talk about the things in security, I said that there has to be a connection on how security works with the kitchen or how the, or how the maintenance work with, uh, with the decor. Although they're different in terms of their own particular function, they do have a connectability to each other. 
So security people got to have food and they need protection. So there's a comp there's a there's there's a connect to, there's a connection between all the departments. And if they're all properly connected together, that's how the whole sanctuary is protected and fed and decorated and, and kept kept the climate control, the heat and, air and AC, the lights are on with the electricians, the plumbers. All of these things help to make the whole help make the whole sanctuary viable and the nation viable. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. Okay. Titus again, one and five. I'm on my, I'm gonna read this and then we're gonna be out. Titus, chapter one, one and verse five. Yes. For this cause left I thee in Crete. Go ahead. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. The and things that are lacking. It is the job of a leader to set in order the things that are lacking. So that leader has to have the understanding of knowing how to organize talents. Knowing how to organize the departments, knowing how to organize the whole thing, everything. Leadership is difficult. That's what Gil Noble said. Leadership is difficult because it takes some real work. I don't, a lot of y'all, some of y'all might not know, I don't really sleep. And I'm not trying to, I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me this is, or anything like that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because my job is to make sure that things operate the way they're supposed to operate. You dig me? And I'm not and I'm not just doing it because if something happened to me and I'm out, you know, something happened, I want some I want people to come be able to carry this thing on. I'm not gonna be able to do this forever, like Bishop ain't gonna be able to do oh, oh, there's got to be a succession of what we do. Y'all feel me? So I want that's the reason why I, I press on all of you, men and women, to bring out the best in you. Cause the nation the nation needs your best. You feel me? All right, read uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 12. I mean, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Jump down. I'm going to skip some. Read, give me the fourth verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts. Diversities of troops. Y'all all right? Troops. I'm talking about troops, operations. Read. But the same spirit. But the same leader. The same leader is Christ. Bishop is our teacher. Our leader is Jesus the Christ. Y'all all right? Deacon Asa had to re refresh that, that saying. Uh, read. And there are differences of administration. And there are differences of it in admin differences of, of. administrations. Yeah, I see. It. Differences of administrations. Administrations differences. The administrations that handles the finances. Administrations that handles uh, the maintenance, uh, the uh, demonstrations that happen that that deals with uh, building and IT. There's there's administrations to the different things that we do here. Although they are underneath the banner of uh, administrations, they are different, but they do have their t uh, tangent points of connectability. A leader has to know how to organize and make all of that run smooth. Read. But the same Lord. But the same God and Christ is over it all. Go ahead. And there are diversities of operations. And there are diversities of operations. This is the reason why I was talking about the car. You know, the fuel system, there's, there's an operation that how the fuel system works in a vehicle. I think that's the best way for me to explain it. The fuel system in a car has its own particular operation that is totally different from the electrical system in a car, from the HVAC system in a car, from the what other kind of systems that are in there, in a car. So I'll just use those three. I can't think of no more. The cooling system, right? These, they're different in their operations, but they all work together for a, for, a, for a vehicle that can move from A to B in comfort and all the rest of the things that you would expect out of a vehicle. But they all work together, and they have their, connect, they have their connection points to make sure that this vehicle can move from A to B. That's how we are. That's what's happening here. Although it's, it's, uh, it's diff it's, the operations are diverse, yet the same brain is over all of it. The ECU, like I was saying earlier, the electric, the um, what is it? The the electrical control unit, the electronic control unit, which is the brain that 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 makes the fuel operate a particular way, the electric system that makes the HVAC work a particular way, the radio, the seats, all of that. It makes it work a particular way because it's underneath the brain that controls the whole thing. Although they're different in their operations, they all work together collectively. To make the vehicle move from A to B. That's how we are to operate. This is the order. Go ahead. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Read. 
But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Each of you have the have you the most high gives us all a proportion of faith, gives us all a proportion of talent. And that's the reason why I say you are to ex, you are to reach into your soul and bring out. Don't waste that talent. The most I gave you abilities, gave you gifts. Don't squander it because the nation needs it and you're going to be required of it. I remember listening to uh, this man named Les Brown many years ago. Les Brown, motivational speaker. Some of y'all young cats might not even know what I'm talking about. But anyway, he made a statement somewhere in his speeches and he said that the graveyard is the richest place on earth. And what he meant by that, he said, because many people take their talents to the grave because they never use the talents that God has given them. Think about that. A lot of us have, some, have different talents, different uh, uh, abilities. This is the reason why I was talking about the stewardship program. That was the purpose of it. Because I want to be, I said, find out who knows what, and this and that and the other, and try to get them to, uh, to, to bring out their gift. Because you never know how far your, the, the, the little gift that you have, you don't have no, no idea on how much, uh, how much you can expand by just doing that one thing. You, it will begin to connect with other things. Exponential growth comes from you just doing one thing, and it turns into 10. Then it turns into 500. That's, that's how it works. You get to you get the networking with with two or three people just because of the one thing you know how to do, and then your trading talents they're showing you a little bit of their things. So now you understand how those how those operations work. Trading the talents, but we all have these gifts within us. Let us bring those gifts up because you are a great people. You are a talented people. You're the greatest people to ever put your foot on this planet, and I mean that. Right. I mean that. There's nobody else greater than you. You black women, you black men, there's no species ever. When God created you, he did his best creation. His best creation. But we don't act like that. Give me that. In a, a pl- no, I planted thee. Uh, Jeremiah, where's uh, 21 something, right? What is that? You know what I'm looking for? Yes, yeah, give me that. You're the greatest. Listen to what the Lord says about you. Jeremiah. We don't, when we don't act right, we turn into something else. But listen to what God calls you. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. God said, I have, he didn't say that about all nations. He said, I have planted you a noble vine. That's his greatest creation when he created you. This is the reason why I talk about you sisters. Look how he fashioned your bodies. Look how he fashioned you men's. God took his time and fashioned you with his fingers and made you beautiful and put clothes on you. The scriptures talk about how he decked us out. He loves us. And he wants us to carry ourselves with that love. You don't abuse your body in wickedness and foolishness. You've lost your damn mind. You think that this body is to be wasted. God fashioned you with his fingers, made you beautiful. Read. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. God said, I made you noble. I didn't make you like anybody else. I made you noble. Go ahead. Holy, a right seed. Holy and a right seed. We have such a beautiful spirit within us. We are a really beautiful people. If we could just get away from the evil and the sin that we have learned up underneath our enemies, that's, man, I tell you, I already can see how beautiful you are because you are a beautiful people. You are really a beautiful people. You just have a lot of negative influences around you, but if you can get away from that, I know I'm dealing with a beautiful, beautiful people. Talented people, wonderful people, creative people. That's you. You, you're the former of all things. You, you don't waste that. Read. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? God said that we have left the nobility and we became strange because that is not who you are. You're not to be strange unto God. God said, I made you beautiful. I fashioned you. 
I put clothes on you. That's, I forget what that scripture that he with broidered, broidered work and all that badges. He hooked us up. I dressed you up. And then we're going to leave all of that and relegate ourselves to garbage. You squander your talent. Why? No. We, we're trying to make IUIC the sanctuary for real, where you can really be you in terms of the greatness that God has made you. You hear me? Let your talents that God given you to be at the top and be at the apex of your existence. Because that's what God made you. Never look at yourselves in any kind of low light to degrade yourself with foolishness. No. You are the supreme being. The Lord said, I have chosen thee as a special people unto himself above all people on the face of the earth. That's not racist. That's fact. You can throw racism in there if you want to. <laughs> but that's fact. <laughs> Y'all all right? God made it that way. The Lord said the nations are nothing. But he said, but you are the people of God. And we need to carry ourselves that way. It doesn't mean that we have to be belligerent and evil to anybody else. But we, have, we should have a, a, a proper respectability towards each other. I won't abuse my sister. I won't abuse my brothers because I don't want my brothers to abuse me. We have that love among each other. Believe me, we can clear up a whole lot of mess. How do you think we deal when we go and deal in these areas and clean up these drug infested areas and all that? We let them brothers know, say, listen, man, you don't have to do it this way. Get in there and deal. A lot of people came out of that mess. But our people have lost hope. But they need to see the hope in you. Read. Where are we at? Uh, go back to Corinthians. I'm just wrapping this thing up. First Corinthians chapter 12. Read my last scripture. Hold on. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up with this here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Give me one second. Give me one second. Um, give me the 14th verse. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 14. For the body is not one member. For the body is not one member. But uh, it's not one department, so you can understand. Not one spirit, not one talent. Go ahead. But many. But it is of many. So the, the leader of the the leader of the sanctuary, the leader of the of the nation, the leader that's over the flock, he has to understand the beauty in all of the elements of his city, of his sanctuary, of of his people that he's governed that the Lord set him over. Read. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. The foot and the hand have totally different operations, but they're both needed. Go ahead. Is it therefore not of the body? Is the foot is no is not of the body, or is the hand not of the body? They're both needed. All of you are needed. All of your talents are needed. All of your greatness is needed. There's nothing that you have that God has given you that is not valuable. I ain't talking about sin. I'm talking about the greatness that he's given you. Don't be afraid to dig within yourself and, 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 and bring out the greatness that God has made in, in you. It's there. It's just buried up underneath doubt. It's buried up underneath doubt. The greatness is there. And you got to think about it. Why did the Lord spare your life day after day, if he's not going to do something great with you. You got to look at things like that. Why did he keep, why, why did, because if the Lord don't have any use for you, he might as well just let me die. But if I'm still on this earth, there's a reason why God has caused me to wake up in the morning. There's a reason why. And we need to ask God, say, so Lord, is there anything that I'm not doing? Because I know you gave me life and I know there's a responsibility for this life there's a requirement for this life that you have given me. What is it that you need from me, Lord? Show me what I can do to, to, to add credit and, and have an appreciation for the life that you have given me. And that talent to come up. The Lord said, I gave, I gave you life because I want you to do this and I want you to bring it into the storehouse. I want you to bring it into the nation. And all of those parts come together. That's how the nation moves. They don't teach us this in school. They don't teach us this nowhere else. The hell with that. The Lord got the education right here. 
And it's all in this one book called the Bible. That's the reason why this ain't no regular book. This ain't no regular novel. This right here can solve all our problems, all of them, damn it. This ain't just some, this, when the Bible, when the most I said this is the book of life, it means that. It is your book, and it deals with all our problems. This is, this is the brain. This is the ECU to the nation of Israel. Right. This right here is the, this is the book that sets all of our engines in perfect sync motion. But when they took this from us, we became an engine with no timing chain. This right here puts us in proper sync. And the Lord said, and the most I gave you that ability. And this bu- book is so beautiful, man. Please take it seriously. Read. And if the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body. The ear is just as important. You got the eyes, you're walking down the street, but if you can't hear that train coming, the ears is gonna warn you that there's a sound coming to the left. Talk about your beautiful body again. Watch this. I'm looking forward, right? If there's a, tra- and I'm looking forward, and my peripheral vision don't, let's say it goes about to this here, but it doesn't get behind Captain the car for an example. You feel me? Listen to what I'm saying. And I'm looking forward, and I hear a train coming. I'm not looking to see which way the train is coming, but I can tell by how God designed my ears to be able to perceive where the train is coming from because the sound waves hit this eardrum before it hit this one and it will connect with my brain to turn to see. And my eyes would work with my ears that's telling me which way the train is coming. The two systems are totally different, but they can both communicate with each other. The train is hearing the danger. My eyes are seeing the danger. They both work together to say, you know what? We need to work together to move the body out of the way. That's the beauty that God made you. That's the beauty that God made this nation. Read. Is it therefore not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? Everybody in this, in this body is important. The people that clean the bathrooms, that is super important. The person that mopped the floor, that is super important. The brothers or whoever that take the garbage out. I remember one time I was in Atlanta and a brother was taking the garbage out. And, they, you know, I'm walking through and one of, this, one of the brothers, I ain't going to say what he was. He said, oh, Bishop is coming. And move, boom, knocked the man out the way. I said, what the hell is this? Trying to impress me. I said, no, man, sit your behind down. Come on, brother. Come on. Take care of this business here. Because he's just as important. Y'all feel me? Now, that was a long time ago. The brother got himself together. I mean, you know, but you don't feel what I'm saying. I ain't mad at the brother, but because this is what this is what happens. Y'all understand? All of us, the talents, the different things that God gives us is important. Don't you ever squander what God gave you. I remember a teacher told me that once. The gift, the gifts and the talents that the Lord gives you, use it to the best of your ability. What do you think God gave it to you for? We're going to be required of that. Okay? You're beautiful people, Israel. And the Most High is trying to gather us together to know how to work properly to offset the terrorist, the terrorism that's levied against our people. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. I hope y'all got something out of today's lesson. I'm going to say happy Sabbath. Shalom. Most High in Christ. Bless you all. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 